I thought he'd be taller. Stan Lee is far from the only actor to appear as multiple different MCU characters. Are you Tony Stank? Although he's technically considered one character, the Watcher informant, but we won't dive into that here. It's kind of like the Jarvis versus Vision argument. Let's check out which actors have taken on more than one Marvel character. It's clobbering time! It's catchy, right? Number one. She's looking a little less blue these days since she got a bigger role. Gemma Chan first appeared in the MCU as Minerva in Captain Marvel. They liked her performance so much and regretted using her so sparingly that they just had to bring her back as Cersei for the Eternals. In fact, it was Kevin Feige who approached her himself and said they were going to find her a character. All right, obviously blue skin makes her a different person. Just roll with it, guys. Don't ask questions. We want to see literally all of our long lost actor friends come back alien swapped. Once. Number two, the triple-headed threat. Taika Waititi not only directed Thor Ragnarok, he also played the beloved character Korg. My name is Korg, I'm kind of like the leader in here. And one of the three heads of Hadju. The left one, Chris Hemsworth played the right head. Waititi also did the mocap for the fire demon Surtur, and even some for the Hulk when Mark Ruffalo wasn't around. Waititi is one of those actors where we would be happy if he played every character in a movie. But who would direct if not him? He is known for acting in movies he's directing, but that might be a bit much for the guy. Well, it didn't. All right, mom and dad, I didn't. Number three. Before Captain America, Evans was super hot. Captain America wasn't Chris Evans' first time putting on a super suit. He played the Human Torch in Fantastic Four six years earlier than his MCU debut. And Johnny Storm was actually his breakthrough role. Love the Fantastic Four series or hate it, one thing is for sure. We wouldn't have had Captain America like we grew to know him if we didn't first have Johnny Storm. Number four, this guy carried the torch. Keeping on track with Fantastic Four actors, we also wouldn't have that fantastic performance by Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger if we didn't first have the reboot of Fantastic Four when he carried the torch, quite literally, playing the same role as our beloved Chris Evans. He went from hero to villain though, and we've gotta say, his performance is strong in both, but we've got a preference for the baddie. Number five, Marvel's most versatile actor. Our boy Ryan Reynolds can play literally anything, like Deadpool, Deadpool again, and himself. But in all seriousness, we would watch him in anything. He did also play Hannibal in King Blade Trinity, so he does have some variety. But let's face it, we go to Ryan Reynolds movies for Ryan Reynolds and would be sorely disappointed if we found he was acting like anybody but himself. Number six, a whole batch of Cumberbatch in one place. Benedict Cumberbatch acted across from himself in Doctor Strange, a lot like Eddie Brock and the symbiote in Venom. If you recall a little moment where Dr. Stephen Strange found himself banishing Dormammu in a time loop, that was Cumberbatch playing off of Cumberbatch. He did all the facial capture for the character. Number seven, you think Heimdall could sense the deja vu? Idris Elba played both Heimdall in Thor and Moreau in Ghost Rider. The interesting thing that ties both characters together are their bright, golden eyes. Elba has said that the process is different between the two films. Thor relied heavily on green screen, while he said Ghost Rider was much more hands-on. Number eight, Jackie Chan thought women belonged in the kitchen until she kicked his butt. Okay, she said it jokingly, don't go boycotting Jackie Chan now. You can spot Michelle Yeoh in both Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as Aletta Ogord and Shang-Chi as Aunt Jiang Nan. I'm glad they, you know, they look at me and they think of me in different characters. She loved returning to the Marvel family. Number nine, can't nothing bring him down. Jon Favreau has been with us since the beginning of the MCU, playing Happy since Iron Man in 2008. But he's been around in another Marvel role, dating all the way back to 2003, where he played Foggy Nelson in Daredevil. What's next for Favreau? Happy, Foggy, Maybe they should have had him play Nick Fury's brother or something next? Can you picture it? We sure can't. Number 10, A Tale of Two Maritas. Kenneth Choi played Jim Marita, a World War II soldier in Captain America, The First Avenger. And then, two generations later, the actor reprised the role, in essence, when he played Principal Marita in Spider-Man, Jim Marita's grandson. Marvel isn't shying away from the Easter egg either. Number 11, The Hero with the Most Name Changes. 
Anthony Mackie has been playing the role of Sam Wilson since Captain America Winter Soldier. And while he was just a dude disguised as another dude in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, if Smiling Tiger was ever brought into the MCU for real, do you think he'd be played by Mackie? He even has a bad nickname. Number 12. Maybe she's just always been one character. You never know with these shifty types. Rebecca Romaine played the mutant shapeshifter in X-Men for the original trilogy and had a small cameo in First Class before passing off the role to Jennifer Lawrence, but that isn't the only role she played in the Marvel Universe. She also played Joan in the 2004 film The Punisher, right in the heart of her time filming for the original X-Men trilogy. Number 13. Does it count as seven characters if five are identical? Patton Oswalt's most recent stint in the MCU was as the voice of Pip the Troll in The Eternals. Before that, he played five identical brothers in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And before that, he played Hedges in Blade Trinity. From the look of things, these roles aren't super conspicuous, so there's a good chance we could see the guy appear again in the future. Number 14. He literally played all of our favorite characters. James Gunn loves to cast his brother, Sean Gunn, in whatever he can. That's how Sean got the role of Franklin in the Guardians of the Galaxy. He also did a bunch of mocap work for the MCU too, playing characters Rocket and Groot. Number 15. Sometimes the biggest heroes are ordinary people. Joe Russo is kind of an interesting guy. Not only did he direct Avengers Endgame, he also played Dr. Fine in Captain America, Winter Soldier, Theo Brass, this time in Captain America Civil War, and our favorite happened in Endgame, where he played an openly gay man struggling with the loss of his partner after the snap. That's great. Number 16. We need more of him, please. Nathan Fillion is friends with director James Gunn, and so has received a couple cameos in the franchise. You might be as surprised as we were to find out he played this prisoner in the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Fillion was supposed to have a bigger role in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man. But his scene was cut short, and he was put on a different project, MODOK, voicing the character instead. We're sad about what could have been, but hopeful for what's yet to come. Oh, Nathan. Nothing is set in stone with Marvel, and from the Easter eggs floating around the web, we still think Fillion might have his day. Number 17. We're seeing double, double. Imogen and Isabella Poynton have split the part of two different Marvel daughters. They first appeared in Guardians of the Galaxy as Day's pink daughter, Roman. And then they came back to play Lila Barton, one of Clint Barton's daughters for Age of Ultron. Although the role went to Ava Russo for the Hawkeye TV show. Number 18. Is he a bore or is he coolie? You can't be both. Tony Curran has played a bunch of roles in Marvel movies. He played Thor's grandfather, Bor, but before that, he played Finn Cooley, a gangster in Daredevil. And outside of the MCU, he played a vampire priest in Blade II and a Division X agent in X-Men First Class. Other than Stan Lee, he's probably the actor who's appeared the most in various Marvel projects. Number 19. We bet Marvel regretted giving him such a short part. Aaron Taylor Johnson played Quicksilver in Age of Ultron, and while that is his only recognizable credit, the man is coming back for Kraven the Hunter in 2023, where he will be playing Sergei Kravenoff. Number 20. Of course the only helpful Karen in the world is AI. Jennifer Connelly voiced Karen, Spider-Man's AI user interface. What's so fun about this casting choice is Jen is married to none other than Iron Man's AI interface. The scepter is alien. Jarvis slash Vision actor Paul Bettany. But this isn't her only stint in a Marvel film, of course. You've got to go all the way back to 2003 to find her in Hulk. Number 21. The guy's good at playing villains, what can we say? Josh Brolin played Thanos in Endgame and Cable in Deadpool 2. The thing that's interesting is he wasn't cast as Thanos from the beginning. The role was originally given to Damien Poitier for this teaser moment in the Avengers mid credit scene. But casting for a tiny teaser and casting for the MCU's biggest villain are two different things, and so Josh Brolin took on the role. Number 22. Marvel really did him dirty recasting him like that. While we're on the Poitier train, he also played two different characters in the MCU. Along with the uncredited Thanos, he played Crossbones mercenary in Captain America Civil War. Try to save as many people as we can. So this is a note to all of you out there who hope to end up acting in a Marvel movie one day. Don't say no to a one-liner role. 
If they like you enough, they will find a way to bring you back, even if it means bending time and space to do it. What cross-casting surprised you the most? Did we leave out any of your favorites? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.